Hey guys, welcome back to Minecraft The Shipwreck. Today we'll be reading chapter 28, which is titled, Tank. It starts on page 233 and goes to page 239. If you guys have enjoyed this book so far, make sure you hit that subscribe button for more Minecraft The Shipwreck. Without further ado, chapter 28. Tank flattens the last cardboard box and tosses it into the recycling bin. He hums to himself the littling, littling notes of melody he's come to associate with the underwater city and the mermaids, and thinks about how close they are to solving the mystery. You haven't been answering your phone, Tank rolls around. Shark approaches him. AJ and Gus follow from the path from the courtyard. Gus kicks a tray, a stray soda can, watching it clatter to the ground. I told you I was grounded. I'm busy with the community service. Tank doesn't know how to say that hanging out with these guys hasn't always been fun. Sure, Fortress Park is cool, but only when you have money to spend on tickets and games. They usually end up wandering around the mini golf course, and so much that Shark likes to do is talk about the great stuff he's going to do, the money he's making while his brother, and how to scare the kids in the neighborhood. I don't know, Shark says thoughtfully. Saw you over by Taco National with some kids, including that guy from the building. Thought we agreed, Tank. They're losers. Shut up, they're my friends. My friends is the first thing that leapt to Tank's mind, surprising himself. They are his friends. They've never laughed at him for the way he likes to play the game or how he likes to collect flowers and build his mazes and farms. It was Emily's idea for him to help make the shortcuts back through the nether, and Jake had gone through with him several times, showing him how to avoid the zombie, zo zombified piglins until Tank felt comfortable going on his own. I, Tank doesn't know how to answer. He was annoyed at first at having to clean every day, but he's come to enjoy spending time with Jake and Emily. He doesn't have to pretend to be something someone they think he could, should be. He can just be himself. Look, you can see them when you're digging your, your service thing, Shark says, but you should remember that without us, without me to watch your back, you'd be nothing, a nobody. Shark's teeth glint menacingly in the morning light. You want to go back to kids laughing at you and calling you Frankenstein? No, Tank admits quietly. Then remember who you are. You're one of us, and we don't hang out with losers, Shark says. Next time I say we're hanging out, you're going to be there, okay? A curl, of dread, a curl of dread starts in Tank's stomach, and he nods. Are you sure we're in the right place, Emily asks. Tank was sure that his last portal would result in just a short walk to the next clue. But he might have done the math wrong to get coordinates. From the nether to the overworld, they're standing, standing in a grassy field approaching what looks like a massive, thick growth of forest. Tank refers to the map in his hand. Sure enough, the red X is ahead of them, and they're walking right toward it. I think so, he says. I thought this would be another underwater clue, Jake says. We spent all the time preparing. I just see green. As they approach, it comes into focus, a massive, thick growth a forest expands as far as the eye can see. It's clearly unnatural. A uniform wall like this would have to have built, de built deliberately. Stacking leaves from trees cut with silk touch axe. Tank is standing where the X is, on the map. His marker is right on top of it. Sure enough, there's an opening in the wall, here. Almost invisible with the way the other green wall behind it bends in. The green hedge walks, walls extend up so high, Tank can barely see the silver or the blue sky. What is this? Jake asks. Where do we go now? There's no sign, no instructions, but it feels incredibly clear to Tank. He steps inside. It's a maze, Tank says confidently. I, th I think to find the next clue, we have to go through it. A maze, Emily says, glancing around nervously. Just of leaves? She takes out an axe and slams it directly into the hedge wall. Nothing happens. 
Same mod as in the beginning, Jake notes. We can't break this. Well, have to go through. This is the riddle, Tank says. Solve the maze. Emily sighs. Great, just great. She stands at the ready with her sword. Let's get this over with then. Tank blinks. I don't think this challenge is about fighting anything. Wait, let's set a spawn point here, just in case, Jake says, throwing a bend, bed on the ground. Good idea. Emily follows suit. Tank shrugs and does the same. Even though he's sure this will be an easy challenge, after the wizard attacked them, he was worried that this whole game was going to be player versus player style. But solving those first two riddles was actually pretty fun. Music starts. A different mo motive from the haunting melody from the shipwreck. This one is playful, but has a twisted air to it. A quick staccato of movement. Something inside Tank rises up. He may not be the best fighter or know how to build any complicated things with redstone, but he knows that, a, that to solve a puzzle like this, all you need is patience. He's always seen it as something to hide away, something people would make fun of, because it's not normal to sit down with a tangle of wire and lights and come out with a single strand, but Tank loves the steady quiet of a single task like this. I've built tons of these. Tank says, surprising himself by speaking. I love mazes. They only seem complicated, but we can go through it. The easiest way to solve a maze is to make a map. Tank pulls out a notepad and plops it down next to his keyboard. He starts drawing an outline so he can keep track of which paths they've taken. The first step is to fill in the blank page. Tank makes a quick decision and heads left, following the path until it meets the intersection. He adds the route to the map he's creating, drawing each dead end and open route he finds. I am so lost, Jake mutters. We're not lost at all, Tank says. Look, being lost means you don't know where you're coming from, and you don't know where you're going, or you have nothing to refer to and no way to make a plan. But we are not lost. We know exactly which path leads back out, and one of these is going to lead to the end, and hopefully the next clue. The first outer walls are all made of different leaf materials, variations of oak birch leaves. As they move inward, the hedges burst into a riot of color with lilacs and rose bushes lining the paths. Tank takes a minute to admire the design as he adds a dead end to his map. It's a little bit more difficult now that the walls are shorter. He can somewhat see to the other side where he has to go, but it's frustrating still trying to figure out the paths. Clink. What was that? Jake asks. Emily takes out her sword. It sounds like a skeleton shooting at us, Tank says. But that would be impossible because it's daytime. Tank suddenly hit by an arrow. We're under attack, Jake shrieks. They must have been modded. Bows, quickly. I hate these stupid bushes, Emily says, shooting frantically at the skeleton. Let's hurry up and get out of here, Jake calls out. Come on, Tank, which way do we go? Tank breaks into a run, darting down a new pathway, only to come face to face, face with a group of skeletons. These are different from any kind of he's seen before, covered in moss with flowers growing in the crevices of the bones. He backs up frantically, his heart in his throat. We got you, Jake says. You can do this. Tank takes a deep breath and concentrates on his map. This corridor of lilacs had three paths. They're already tried one. He quickly calculates that based on what they've already explored, the one on the right, the one on the left has nowhere to go. Right, Tank says, running quickly as he crunches on a loaf of bread. Tank takes the lead. He ignores the skeletons firing at him and concentrates on what he does best, being patient. He writes down every new path he discovers, doubles back to his last known solid point, and keeps going left. Right. Turn. Mark down this intersection. Wait. No. They've seen the lilac rose ashore. Azure. Bolt blew it. Formation before. Turn around. Go back in order to go forward. He keeps moving. The next turn. Tank comes face to face with a spider. He doesn't think about it. Just slashes at it with a sword. Plowing forward. More spiders scuttle down the path. And this time, Tank is sure. He's sure of his map and how the mobs are positioned here. 
or to scare the event adventurers, make them second guess where they are in the maze. But he knows exactly what he's doing. This way, Tank calls out. With Emily and Jake at his side, Tank feels like he's capable of anything. An open archway beckons them. Dandelions and peonies grow in the soft yellow and pink blooms, and beyond it, an open stretch of sand and sparkle of water. They climb up the sandy knoll ahead of them. The ocean glimmers. A single chest stands at the center of the sandy beach. Emily opens it and reads the coordinates aloud. These are super far, she groans. Even if we go through the nether, we can figure that out, Jake says. But first, good job, man. We made it. Jake exhales in relief. Yeah, we did it. We finished the maze. Tank announces his triumph, heart pounding in his veins. You did it, Emily says, grinning at him. We couldn't have done it without you. Tank looks back at the maze. Now it's just a sheer mass of green again. Hiding the complicated tangle of hedges and flowers inside, it was more complex than anything Tank's ever built, and he solved it. He got them through it. Jake claps him on the back, and Emily throws her hands up in the air, de delighted, and Tank can't help but smile back. He's not used to this at all. The unbashed way they pr they're proud of him, celebrating their ac accomplishments together, but mostly celebrating him. Maybe he isn't nobody, after all. That wraps up chapter 28. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, hit that like button, and I will see you guys next time.